I am Johnny Massacre and welcome to the Johnny Massacre Show. This is the Tuesday Morning Massacre. On this morning's show, the Joe Rogan, Dr. Malone podcast fallout has been fucking insane. Who's fucking with me? Give me a hell yeah! So, I'm sure you all know about the Joe Rogan, Dr. Malone podcast by now shattering the COVID narrative. So, the fallout from this, as I just said, has been fucking nuts. So, firstly, YouTube removed the video from their platform within 48 hours of it being uploaded there by an account other than the Joe Rogan account because Joe Rogan doesn't upload his podcasts there. Then after that video was taken down, the big tech cartel systematically went about burying this podcast in their search algorithms, uh, it's mainly Google, suppressing any articles also supporting or casting this podcast in a good light. Then the Streisand effect occurred, which is when if you try to hide something, then everyone starts talking about it more and the thing that you were trying to hide gets more attention than it would have had you not tried to hide it. And then Joe Rogan joined Getter, which sparked a mass exodus of public figures saying, fuck you, Twitter, I'm going to a rival. And finally, a US congressman added the podcast to a congressional record to prevent it from being memory hold. So that's the shit that's happened in the wake of this podcast featuring one of the inventors of, or at least part inventors of the RNA technology used in vaccines sold by companies such as Pfizer and all the corruption relating to that. So YouTube took down the video. How many views did the video have? You might be curious. This is unknown. As a regular user, um, Spotify as well, you can't really see the viewing figures. So if we, if we could see the Spotify viewing figures and compare those in ratio to YouTube viewing figures across any video, you might get some sense of how many YouTube views there were. But on Spotify, you also can't see how many views this podcast has. I believe the people who launched the podcast themselves, i.e. Joe Rogan's team, know the data and they might release it on social media at some point, but as of yet, they haven't. And so we just don't know how many views it had. The previous podcast that helped to begin the shattering of the COVID narrative was with another doctor known as Peter McCullough. And that was apparently receiving over 40 million views. But this is a number that's just thrown around online with careless abandon. I don't know where that came from. But if that is true, that the previous kind of COVID shattering podcast received 40 million views, you can bet your fucking ass this one received more because Dr. Malone has more engagement than Peter McCullough. Now, as for the mainstream media going to town on trying to suppress this interview, I'm going to show you some evidence of this. So first of all, Google started suppressing the information and people were calling that out on Twitter. So why don't you come on over to my screen, you beautiful massacre friends, and I'll give you all the information and evidence. So here we see Zach Herbert, who says, we are witnessing Google's real-time censorship of the term mass formation psychosis, as mentioned by Malone and Rogan. Don't let them get away with it. Listen to the podcast episode yourself. So in this video, some extreme censorship. They're, they're trying to type in a keyword from the podcast, mass formation psychosis. And when they type it in, it doesn't really come up. But did you see it kind of came up for a second and then disappeared? So let's listen to him talk. This YouTube video managed to get through. This one's about an anti-vaxxer, calling Malone an anti-vaxxer. This one is from Clark County today. So quite simply, it's, it, it's showing some kind of, if you go over to DuckDuckGo, the rival search engine, this is what happens. And it's the top thing that comes up. So you can see Google kind of suppressing it. And I'm, I kind of know how this works. I've seen this happen with my own stuff and Google and big, especially Google of all the big tech companies with their search algorithms, they're so fucking sneaky because they try to make it look like it's not shadow banned. So if you type in a certain combination, it might come up, which is insane because the average person 
so much has to think of the next item he wants to buy and then suddenly it's all over Google. So you're telling me with probably the number one trending or one of the number one trending terms in the whole world, that's not gonna come up instantly on Google with the power of their elite world-class algorithms. It's fucking bullshit. So Google was suppressing it. I've got more uh, information from Google about them suppressing stuff and I, I, I found this myself. So have a look at this. You can see when I typed uh, Joe Rogan doctor here, Malone didn't even come up anywhere. Peter McCullough came up, but not Malone, which is completely insane because everyone was searching for him at that point. And if any search engine is capable of indexing something at light speed and having those search terms available immediately, popular search terms, it is certainly Google. And the interesting thing is just to make sure that this isn't an indexing problem, like they didn't have enough time to index Dr. Malone and Joe Rogan's podcast. I looked at the previous podcast and it was this guy called John Abramson, as you can see there. That was literally, I think it was less than 24 hours before the Dr. Malone podcast. And searching on Google, that shit came up right away. You can see here, Joe Rogan, John Abramson. But searching for Joe Rogan, doctor doesn't bring up Dr. Malone. So Google and all of big tech, Twitter, YouTube, working in cahoots in fascist fashion, carrying out the will of the state to suppress information. Jack over on Twitter also brought attention to this. He said, Dr. Malone broke the algorithm and now Google is struggling to manually edit the results when you search for mass formation psychosis. Try it, never seen this before. So when you search for this term, you don't get anything and it says, it looks like these results are changing quickly. Translation, please give us some time to update the algorithm to make sure we don't recommend you anything that goes contrary to the narrative. There you go. So on top of big tech search algorithms showing bias against this internet breaking podcast, the mainstream media who are also part of this hydra, this kind of globalist hydra, who all sing from the same hymn sheet, started releasing articles trying to smear this podcast and delegitimize it. I have some examples of this also, Massacre Friends. Take a look at my screen one more time. As you can see, it says, Joe Rogan interview with Peter McCullough. During the interview, which spanned about two hours and 45 minutes, McCullough made multiple inaccurate, misleading, and or unsubstantiated claims about the COVID-19 pandemic. And then you had other headlines like this over on Yahoo. Uh, it says, YouTube takes down anti-vax, anti-vax, Joe Rogan interview with Dr. Malone. So what they're trying to do here is delegitimize the story. They basically nitpick it to death and try to bury it. And um, I mean, just looking at the second headline, talking about anti-vaxxers and stuff. So Dr. Malone is, is an anti-vaxxer or something. Um, if, if you're called, and especially if Dr. Malone, like the inventor of these vaccines, is, is called an anti-vaxxer for being pro-evidence-based and pro-informed consent by rightly, in my opinion, questioning the big pharma narrative, then the mainstream media, the people who write those articles and big tech is now obviously in a corner and they've just got nothing left to throw at you other than... Uh, ad hominem attacks and calling you names because they have no argument, but it has always worked this way. This is how the leftist media work. And this is why people are leaving legacy media in droves because within the small description of what the article is, they're saying it's misleading, it's inaccurate. That's purely political spin. That is Orwellian rewriting of the narrative, trying to memory hold the old narrative and then update it with a new narrative. It's quite simply telling you how to think before you've even gone into the article. No wonder mainstream media is in its death throes. So the media narrative is quite simply, Dr. Malone, bad, terrible person, derogatory person, and anyone who likes him is bad, terrible, and a derogatory person. And my question is, well then, why 
is the media narrative so anti-Rogan, so anti-Rogan and Malone? Well, one reason for this is this. So here are quarter three 2021 media ratings showing the average viewers per show across all shows. And as you can see, in ninth place is CNN with less than a million viewers per show. MSNBC has around a million viewers. The Rachel Maddow show somehow has 2.2 million viewers. Then the top six, or at least the top five, are all conservative shows. The Ingraham Angle, Fox News, Primetime, Hannity, The Five, Tucker Carlson Tonight, averaging 2.2, 2.35, 2.37, 2.94, 2.98, and, and 3.24 million viewers per show, respectively, which I just would like to add, sidetracking a little bit, really substantiates how someone from the opposite end of the political spectrum, Joe Biden, is the most popular president of all time and sitting pretty at the top, you can't see the number, but I've seen it, is the Joe Rogan experience with 11 million views per show. So this is one of the reasons, one of various reasons why the legacy media and mainstream media are going so hard after Joe Rogan and this show. People just want the truth, quite simply. And people are waking up to the lies of the mainstream media and big tech in my opinion. And no wonder that Joe Rogan has more viewers and people are leaving their old media sources for Joe Rogan because old media sources and new ones like Big Tech abuse their customers. They abuse their customers. They belittle them and shame them. This is a leftist trend that kind of emerged around the time of Gamergate and Milo Yiannopoulos and, and things and people like that, respectively. And you could see it manifest in movies like the feminist remake of Ghostbusters, where somebody does something dishonest and dislikable and then when people go well that's not very honest or that's not very good then the people who make it say you're a piece of shit if you don't consume my product you're garbage you're sexist you're racist you're whatever so the legacy media and big tech's hubris if you will in banning this podcast has therefore created a massive user exodus and the Streisand effect, which means in an attempt to, to cover up and sense this information, they've probably drawn more attention to it than if they hadn't, which I fucking love. Here is the evidence of that. So I just took this today, and this is like three days after the podcast, and Dr. Malone, the center of this podcast and controversy, who helped destroy the covid narrative and implement the government in human rights abuses has 118,000 tweets in first place. And second place is Bloodborne, which is a video game with less than 10% of those tweets. This is fucking huge news. And this was taken on the day of the podcast. He's been trending for three days. Dr. Malone, 248,000 tweets. And I did make a podcast the other day and you can see a preview of a podcast the other day which you can see there which told you that they are about to break the internet and i'm here to say i told you so more evidence of the streisand effect caused by big tech and legacy media attempting to censor and rewrite history in the face of the brilliant Dr. Malone and Joe Rogan podcast comes from Jordan B. Peterson, who I'm extremely fond of. He said, doesn't look like trying to condemn or cancel Joe Rogan is really doing any good. Quite the contrary, in fact. And he's retweeting myth-informed MKE, who really came to prominence during this whole Dr. Malone affair by posting excerpts of the podcast in video form. And they said, wow, 3.4 million views of their excerpt of that particular podcast. And I don't think Jordan B. Peterson is actually making this statement out of astonishment or surprise. I think he's tacitly saying, fuck you to all the people who try to cancel free speech. And if you do this, 
you're going to lose customers. That's what Jordan's really saying. And so many people echoed that sentiment online. We had people like the judgmental baby who said, thank you, Twitter, for banning Dr. Robert Malone. I honestly wouldn't have watched this interview with Joe Rogan otherwise. But after seeing you pull him down for honest questions that we all have, it stoked my interest. That interview was epic, a game changer. Thanks, Twitter. Again, I think this is just trolling. I think this guy would have watched it anyway. But it's kind of ironically rubbing it in the face of big tech. Um, how censorship is going to work against them and they're going to fall on their own sword. This is breaking the internet. Even my mates are sending me messages and stuff on social media who don't normally talk about this stuff. And that doesn't really happen. I very rarely get just random mates who aren't politically minded bombarding me with messages about this, these kind of issues or podcasts in general, political ones. So... For example, these are some of the messages I received. One of my friends said, so true, mate. I'm making my way through the Dr. Malone and Rogan podcast, three hours everyone should listen to. My other mate said, the fact that Malone got censored is a totalitarian travesty. People need to wake the fuck up. And the guy who sent me that, he's vaccinated. So even vaccinated people are now starting to wake up to how insane this is. So what happened next during the fallout of the Joe Rogan, Dr. Malone podcast you may ask well to find out first i would like to say i am johnny massacre and we have been discussing joe rogan and dr malone podcast and the fallout in its wake but if you've been watching from the beginning stop your grinning and drop your linen donate some cash and let's keep winning streamlabs.com forward slash johnny massacre the more you donate the more of these videos you're going to get i recently got a donation fifty dollars from lan who's a very loyal massacre friend i really appreciate you and Lan wished me a happy new year. So thank you so much, Lan. Uh, people like you make this show possible. And you're the first person to donate in 2022. You have that illustrious honor. Thank you so much. So what happened next in the fallout of this podcast? Well, Joe Rogan, he's basically moved to Getter. Or maybe that's exaggerating a bit. He started a Getter account which is fucking huge. If you are a stakeholder in Getter and Joe Rogan fucking joins your account, I don't think there's anyone who could join. I mean, it's a very small group of people you could probably count on two hands who could join your platform that's going to bring as many <laughs> new subscribers as Joe Rogan. But it has, in fact, happened. So the tweet that Rogan made announcing this said, join me on Getter. That's all he said. And then over on Getter, he dropped a, a, a get. I don't know what you call it over there. And he said, just in case shit over at Twitter gets even dumber, I'm here now as well. Rejoice. So proving what I said, that stifling free speech and censoring people is not a good strategy. People react very badly to that because it's dishonest and people react positively to honesty. Not only are loads of people moving now from Twitter, but a lot of high profile names are moving from Twitter. And this is analogous from people moving away from the left in general. Joe Rogan's a liberal, but they've gone so far to the left that Overton window has left him stranded and now he's kind of moved over. Joe Rogan physically left the state of California to Texas because leftism was destroying everything. And now he's physically potentially leaving Twitter to somewhere else um, because of the same reasons. Leftism is radical right now. And the reason they get away with it is because they control all the pillars of power and they create this illusion and astroturfing of support when actually I, I'm pretty sure the average person thinks this is ridiculous. And how many people follow Joe Rogan? Fucking 7.9 million in one day. 7.9 million in one fucking day immediately. Look at it for yourself. Here's the numbers. Joe Rogan over on Getter, 7.9 million followers. That is fucking insane. And he currently has 8.5 million. The loyal fans really are the bread and butter of creators. So the people who watch this show all the time, it's such a small, and who donate, and who, who are loyal, like Lan from earlier, are really important. And they represent a, a, such a small percentile of the overall amount of, of people who kind of watch it or, or kind of subscribe to it. So when I move platforms, I'll get like 20 people following. I just started a Substack. Please check it out. Link in the description below. It's another side to me. I'm very well written. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And I've got like 20, 30 people subscribing when I have 11,500 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, shadow banning um, 
being adjusted into the equation. But when someone like Joe Rogan fucking moves to another platform, 8.5 million is fucking nuts. Is nuts. It's he's he's just he's smashing it right now. So yeah, Getter was was trending over on Twitter, of course. You can see here trending. And then underneath it in Orwellian fashion, they write, Why did Twitter suspend Marjorie Taylor Green? So the left want to smear anyone who's not part of their cult as some kind of racist right-wing psychopath. So they conflated Getter with um, with uh, Green there, who was also banned from Twitter on the same day as Joe Rogan was banned. And the thing is, a lot of people like Joe Rogan who are in the middle. So that's going to make them sympathize with someone who you could argue is very far on the right. So again, Twitter just just pushing people away to the other side. I was pushed away by the left so long ago. Actually, I wasn't I didn't wasn't pushed anywhere. I stood in the same place and they went so far away. And now eventually plenty of other people are getting left behind the further and further to the left the the juggernaut goes. I do like the way that Getter was trending on Twitter by the way. It's kind of like I don't know Pepsi being advertised on a can of Coke. I find that very ironic and I love that. And ironically, after everyone's clearly going to Getter and stuff, the mainstream media set to work on smearing Getter as something related to MAGA in the same way as they smear anyone who's opposed or questioning vaccines as an anti-vaxxer. They just never learn. It's just going to push more and more people away. So we had articles like this on Google coming up. Business Insider says, Joe Rogan joins Getter, a MAGA alternative to Twitter. So these people have no argument. All they can do is say, this is racist. This is MAGA. This is this is uh, anti-vax. That's all they can say is smear people and shame people. And nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. You're going to push more and more people away because that ideology will not stop. It, it will It will turn on their own people and people will start cannibalizing themselves with their own vicious ideology. So just keep fucking doing it, left. Because then when you fortify, Time Magazine said it, not me, when you fortify elections, it's going to be harder and harder for people to believe in the future. Just call people names. You anti-vaxxer, you fucking MAGA supporting whatever. You're just going to lose your customers. And it's beautiful. I, I think this is beautiful what's happening now, how the left are becoming exposed, the radical left. And that's why there is so much censorship because the left, just at the moment, they cannot compete in the free market of ideas. They, they have to murder op opponents and they have to game the system and cheat the system. Otherwise, they're just not going to win. It's the only way they can do it. When have you ever seen people on the left have an open debate with someone on the right? People on the right, they extend the invitation all the time. Ben Shapiro all the time. He says no one accepts the invitation. When has Fauci ever been in a debate with someone on the other side? You never see it because they have no argument. And the only way they can keep their position is through corruption and cheating. Here's another headline about, about Getter from Mashable trying to smear it. Getter, that site for Twitter rejects. This is why they're starting to lose. It's such divisive arrogance. Oh, all those people are mad. They're crazy. They're deplorables. They're anti-vaxxers. You're supposed to be, the left is supposed to be the party of tolerance and equity, but actually they're the most intolerant and inequitable of all. Because if you don't subscribe to what they think, they will smear you as a piece of shit and try to ruin your life. It's just pure evil. And I want to put this out there. I'm not of the right or the left or the middle. I am an anomaly. So Getter, of course, in light of capitalizing off the internet breaking Dr. Malone and Joe Rogan podcast exploited the fallout to their advantage and they released a press release kind of summarizing what the hell is going on. So this is the official press release from Getter. It says Getter sees tremendous surge in signups after podcast superstar Joe Rogan joins platform. Getter, the free speech social media platform which fights cancel culture, welcomed 171,629 new users on Sunday, the biggest surge in single day signups since launching on July the 4th after podcaster Joe Rogan and dozens of other big names joined the platform amid a flesh flurry of big tech censorship. Other people joined, like I said, activist Andy No, thorn in the side of Antifa, political commentator Dave Rubin. Comedian Larry the Cable Guy, Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, Zuby, among others, joined Getter. 
Rogan's decision to join Getter came on the same day Twitter permanently banned the personal account of US Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, citing multiple violations of their policies. Big tech is censoring itself into irrelevance. It's clear deplatforming President Trump was just the beginning in their war on free speech, and now they're coming for anyone who doesn't conform to their worldview, said Getter Chief Executive Officer Jason Miller. The incredible growth we're experiencing at Getter is proof that people are waking up to this dangerous reality. It's a press release, so they're going to big up their own brand, but I think it's pretty accurate what they're saying there. So plenty of pe- plenty more people in addition to those people switched to Getter, myself included, Brett Weinstein did. Yes, it's Weinstein. It's not pronounced Weinstein. Matt Letissier, the legendary Southampton footballer, among many others. And I have some breaking news for you, Massacre friends, that I don't think you've probably heard anywhere else. Getter is getting big in Japan, which is kind of unbelievable because Western apps like that never catch on unless they're trending like crazy and basically nobody knows about this other than me so i have an insider who actually is working as a client of getter and i'm going to read you what they told me about getter if it's big in japan that means it's going to be fucking massive all over the world it's the third biggest economy in the world or the fourth i think so My friend said, are you on Getter? My company just signed a contract with them to be their agency for Japan. They have 2 million users already. And interestingly, over 25% of those Getter users are from Japan. The main guy, Jason Miller, was a Trump advisor, but with Trump launching his own truth network, that is taking some of the political heat of Getter and it's growing fast as the legit alternative to Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc. My friend said, I'm still working out why so many Japanese are using it. Trump is a factor, but I think also anti-China. So Japan and China fucking hate each other. So Getter, there's some information you might not have heard about Getter. And... I guess the last kind of piece of the fallout was a US congressman taking action to try to prevent this censorship. So Congressman Troy Nels tweeted out, breaking, today I submitted the transcript from the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, episode 1757 with Dr. Robert Malone to the congressional record. Big Tech wants to restrict your access to this information, but they cannot censor the congressional record. So that's quite interesting. He's trying to preserve this information in some way. But at the same time, it makes me realize exactly why Trump was banned, the president of the United States of America, because big tech have, in some ways, much more power than the government itself. Okay, this guy's preserved it, but who's going to fucking seek out that record? The average person is just going to look online. That's where the narrative is crafted. And so we are up against an absolute beast in the, the hydra as I like to call them after my recent Substack, which you can find in the description box below, uh, working together as such like a cartel, mainstream media, big tech, the US government and whatnot, all collaborating in order to censor and basically enforce totalitarianism, only one viewpoint. So where is this going, Massacre Friends? Where are we going now after this narrative shattering podcast with Dr. Malone, and Joe Rogan, and also Peter McCullough and Joe Rogan. Well, according to Ivory Hecker over on the Twitters, she thinks it became clear to me that the entire mainstream media machine could wind up falling at the hands of content creators like Rogan. Her substack says, the mainstream media is losing the fight of its life. She's expecting one of the largest mainstream media pivots in history in 2022, catalyzed by capitalism and common sense. I wish I shared her enthusiasm because I predicted already that Joe Rogan will be banned before these two podcasts, at least before the Dr. Malone one. My horrible memory um, doesn't extend back as far as Peter McCullough, but absolutely, um, I predicted before this this very controversial interview that Joe Rogan will be banned. Because if they can ban Trump, they literally can ban anyone. And and Joe Rogan, as Ivory rightly pointed out or insinuated there, is is fucking up. Probably this one guy's the main this one guy and this one institution, one man institution is the main threat to the legacy media and big tech. So they're just gonna get rid of him. They're just gonna get rid of him. Spotify will be lobbied into doing it. I do not know the political hierarchy of Spotify. They have woke playlists on it. I've seen BLM and like Pride Month playlists and stuff. 
and kind of victimhood culture on there. You know, the typical like, oh, these are the finest women in this genre, um, infantilizing women and making them out like they need some kind of help in exchange for your votes on Spotify. But did I say Twitter earlier? If I did, I meant Spotify. But someone told me Spotify was taken over by someone recently who might not be woke. I, I don't fucking know. The other argument against Joe Reagan being banned from Spotify is, well, the numbers are so good, but wokeness will destroy everything and it doesn't operate within the realm of common sense. So I think they would basically cannibalize themselves and destroy themselves um, as long as it it's, suits their ideology. So I don't think they're going to keep it on there just because of the numbers. Although you never know. You never know. If the kind of free thinker movement becomes so huge, perhaps it will be impossible to cancel these people because the money would just be so damn good. Who knows? Maybe there's lobbyists out there of a opposing ideology that will just lobby these companies and try to get rid of these people. But I don't know. What do you think? Do you think Joe Rogan's going to be banned for this? Do you think they're going to come for him? Because I do. Even though that I have quite a negative viewpoint of all of this, I think that this has woken a lot of people up and it will wake a lot of people up because the narrative is so obviously dishonest. However, I think the powers that be, the Hydra, will push on regardless, unabated. I think Joe Rogan will keep up the fight as long he, as he's allowed to. He is leading the charge alone, which is just insane how the media, the government and Big Pharma are all potentially at threat because of this one guy so yeah i just hope joe rogan's going to be all right hope he's not going to get epsteined mccullough and malone will be the forces of the resistance in my opinion the two kind of leading doctors who both had the successive podcast on joe rogan the peter mccullough and dr malone podcast was the metaphorical one-two punch against the coronavirus narrative and Rogan's obviously going to be a leading character in the resistance against uh, vaxism and the COVID narrative and the government narrative. You could make a movie out of this, right? Rogan, McCullough, Dr. Malone, me, I'm going to be in there, hopefully. <laughs> and yeah, this is proved by the fact now McCullough, who did the original kind of internet breaking COVID narrative challenging podcast, is now commenting on the Malone podcast. Look at this. Peter McCullough just said, Dr. Malone is qualified to make this call with his experience in bioethics. Mass formation means there is no limit to the absurdity of public health actions taken and so on and so on and so on. And he's commenting on an article in the Epic Times titled Dr. Robert Malone to Rogan, US in mass formation psychosis over COVID-19. So I love the, 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 the chronology of this um, cultural event regarding vaccines and the pushback against vaccines. You had Peter McCullough and then he was hyping Dr. Malone. Then Malone came on. Joe Rogan performed perfectly with both guests. And now Peter McCullough is coming back and commenting on the Malone interview. And it's just going to continue from there with those characters. So in light of this, in light of this, I want to go back to a point I made earlier about debating. I want to say, I want to ask, where is the public debate between Fauci and the CDC and McCullough and Malone, the new stars of the COVID narrative? Fauci, if you're old enough to remember, said he is the science. He said, I am the science. So if you are the science, that means you're the equivalent of like fucking messy in football, in, in their respective field, or Mike Tyson, prime Mike Tyson in boxing. If anyone challenged them, if any pretenders came out, they would fucking, they live for competition and they're great at what they do. They have faith in themselves. So they will engage in that competition and destroy the challenger. So if Fauci really is that good, why the fuck has he not engaged in a single debate with any of the opposition? Why has no politician engaged in any debate? The government makes all the rules, right? They have all the power. Ergo, they must employ the best scientists, right? So, if the government are right and they have the best scientists, in a public debate, they'll destroy people like Malone, right? Google told me. These people are fucking MAGA, whatever. They're going to destroy Malone. They're going to destroy McCullough. But the government and quote scientists end quote like Fauci don't have a public debate with people like McCullough and Malone opposition. Why not? I think the answer is pretty obvious. 
So finally, other people will join the fight on top of McCullum alone, Jordan B. Peterson, and people like me and you. Jordan B. Peterson is joining the fight. Mark the date. He is going to be on Joe Rogan's podcast, Entering the Culture War, once again. Look at this tweet by Jordan B. Peterson. He says, talking with the redoubtable, not sure what that means, Joe Rogan on January 24th. Jordan B. Peterson will be on Rogan on 24th. Maybe he's just talking about the interview process itself, in which case it might be released 25th, 26th or a week or two later, but hopefully we'll get it sooner rather than later. And I'm really excited about Jordan doing this because as you know, he had some personal problems, family issues and became addicted to some kind of opioids or something, nearly died and whatnot. And he came back slowly and he was kind of crying a lot. The guy had a serious breakdown and that guy is, is so important in the culture wars. Um, culture is more important than politics itself in swaying people to vote and influencing the direction of where a country is going to go, in my opinion. And Jordan B. Peterson is invaluable in that. And imagine if he hadn't had a breakdown and he had applied his perfect arguments he had used to crush all the other nefarious kind of globalists in the past to COVID and to vaccines. Perhaps we wouldn't be in such a fucked up state right now. So I'm hoping that Jordan lets it all out. There are signs of this. On his Twitter, he's questioning vaccines. He's... He's promoting um, protests. He said he's double vaccinated. And Jordan B. Peterson said he won't be having another one. Uh, using very, very, very strong language indeed. Um, not typical of Jordan B. Peterson and his history at all. So I predict Jordan B. Peterson, especially after Malone and McCullough, is going to go into this with guns blazing. We've had the full circumference of, of scientific opinion from McCullough and Dr. Malone, they covered all the bases regarding the COVID narrative. And now it's time to get a philosopher and a psychiatrist in here. And I cannot wait. I absolutely cannot wait. So that is the fallout of the Joe Rogan, Dr. Malone podcast. We will not be defeated, Massacre Friends. Reason, science and love will prevail. So join me every day this week for more curated news and truth. I have been Johnny Masca, and I'll tell you what, mate, you better be back for the next episode. Otherwise, I'll be coming around your house. Please make sure to like and subscribe and donate generously and hit that notification bell because that is what all those other cunts tell you to do. Layers.